Hey hoes, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kenzie and I'm so happy that you found my channel. For those of you who do know me, number one, no I did not dye my hair. Number two, no my hair is not greasy. It is just wet. I just washed my hair and then I decided to film two videos. So the next two videos are going to be me with this hair. Um, so today is, that is really bright. Oh my god, okay. Let's turn this down. So today's video is actually one that hits pretty close to home. It is a 16 year old lifeguard that went missing and was later found murdered. So it hits really close to home. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I was a lifeguard for six or seven years growing up. I started when I was 16 and I was worked there on and off until I was 22, um, 22 or 20, 22, I think. So six years on and off. Um, so it hits really close to home and yeah so today I'm going to be telling you about the case of Molly Bish. Before we get into this video I do quickly want to note that it was highly covered in the time at the time and yet I can't find a lot of information about it. So a lot of the articles I read said the same information so this isn't going to be so like in depth and in detail. But just to tell you guys about this case, um, let's go right into this video. Molly Bish was born August 2nd, 1983 in Warren, Massachusetts to her parents, John and Maggie Bish. So like I already said, this story really hit close to home because I was a lifeguard in high school, just like Molly. I opened the pool by myself just like Molly. So it hits really close to home because if I worked at an outdoor pool, even the pool that I worked at, this definitely could have been me. Um, so that is why I wanted to share her story. So June 27th in the year 2000, Molly's mom, Maggie, dropped her off at the Commons Pond where Molly was a lifeguard. About 25 minutes later, swimmers started to arrive, but there was no sign of Molly anywhere. Her shoes, a medical kit, a water bottle, and what well, I think it, it was called something different in the article I read, but I believe it's a walkie-talkie, was found by the lifeguard chair. However, Molly was gone. So kind of what I already touched on is that there, I don't have a lot to go on with this case. When I was doing my research, I only saw one other YouTuber make a video of this case. Like I said, it was covered pretty highly or pretty, pretty well um for the times it was nowhere near like Madeline McCann or anything like that like I just heard about this case the other day um but it like so that being said we're gonna get into the timeline but it's not super in detail um so June 28th 2000 around 200 people um gathered together to help search for Molly um where the police were actually investigating some off-road car tracks that they deemed suspicious. June 29th of the year 2000, seven people were questioned and um, they were questioned as suspects. July 6th of the year 2000, so a little time has passed, not much, but a little time has passed. The police actually released a sketch of one of their suspects. They don't know who this man is. Um, Molly's mom, Maggie, had seen a man in a white car outside of the pond that um, when she dropped Molly off. Um, I guess at the time she just didn't think anything of it, but um, so they released a sketch of this man that was in this white car. A $20,000 reward was announced for any information, um, for anybody who gave any information to the safe return or to the return of Molly. On August 4th, the pond was searched around the outskirts um, so I'm not sure, I'll have to search for a picture of this pond because I was a lifeguard at a pool, she was a lifeguard at a pond, so I don't know if it was just like, kind of like a lake, like I don't know the situation, um, I'll try to find a picture of it, but they had looked the, around the outskirts of this pond and they didn't find anything, so they actually postponed draining the pond and to a later date, they were initially going to drain the pond to see if there was a body in it, um, but because their initial search turned up with nothing, they decided to postpone draining the pond. Since the disappearance, 13 people had been questioned, um, and that includes a lot of sex offenders. 
and um, all of these 13 people were given polygraph tests as well, but again, nothing really came from it. So like I had said, um, all the articles I was reading basically had the same information. Um, so the only other thing that I really found was like in regards to the timeline was that um, there's uh, some details talking about the kid care ID program that the Bish family started. Um, they also had around um, 1,000 motorcyclists who actually rode 60 miles and they called it the Ride for Molly, um, raising money and adding an additional $10,000 to the reward money. And then on December 4th of the year 2000, the budget for the investigation to help find Molly was actually increased so that they could have an entire um, group solely dedicated to Molly's case, as well as the reward money was up to $100,000 at this point. So fast forward a couple of years to the year 2002, um, the fall of 2002, a hunter was hunting in the woods and came across a blue bathing suit. The discovery of this bathing suit then triggered another search for that area where they then came across some more belongings. They found a headband um, that was similar to the one Molly was known to wear. Um, and then eventually they did come across um, some remains. The remains weren't found until June 2nd, 2003, where an arm bone and teeth were actually found. And later on, June 9th, 2003, it was determined that these were the remains of Molly Bish. So keeping in mind, it had been three years since Molly's disappearance. Um, her funeral was then held on what would have been her 20th birthday. So now the latest update I could actually find is just this year on in June 2021. Over the past 21 years, several tips have still continued to roll in um, because this case was still unsolved. So several tips were coming in and this eventually led them to a new suspect. Francis P. Sumner Sr. was a convicted rapist and kidnapper who actually had died in 2016. However, despite the fact that he was no longer um, alive, he was um, announced as their latest suspect in the Molly Bish case. However, that is, un that is unfortunately all I can really find about um, Francis P. Sumner Sr. Um, I didn't actually search for like information on him himself, but in regards to this case, um, I think it was just the articles I was reading. I read a quite a few different articles. They all just said the same information. So um, I'm going to keep researching this case just because it does hit very close to home. Um, if I find any new information or if I find more information, I will make a whole new video. Um, but yeah, me and Molly Bish have a lot, a lot, um, like this case hits so close to home because I opened the pool early by myself. She opened the pool early or the pond. She was there early opening by herself. Um, she was a lifeguard. I was a lifeguard growing up. Like it just hits really close to home. So that's why I wanted to bring this case to you guys. So that is it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy. I post videos every single day in the month of October. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.